350 with a strong finish to the left. All right, decision time. Am I throwing my Destroyer, my Zeus, my Raider, my Pharaoh, my D1, or that new DD3 in the Italian plastic? I do like Ferraris. DD3 it is. What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. And this week we wanna talk about an issue that I believe is incredibly prevalent within the disc golf world, especially when it comes to beginners. Yet so many people often just graze right past it and don't think about the impact they can actually have on our game. Lately, I've been thinking more about the comparisons between golf and disc golf. There is a critical lesson to be learned here that we can all apply to our game to help us become a better player. I don't want to just tell you how to fix the issue because for lots of people, they don't understand that it might actually be a problem affecting their performance. I love diving into this side of disc golf because caddying is just as exciting for me as playing. So if you'll trust me, I would love to step in and be your personal caddy for the day to help you take your bag to the next level. As always, I want to be a proper YouTuber and let you know that if you're not already, I would be honored for you to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy what we're doing here, hit the like button as well. I'm so grateful for the support of this community. I am stoked to see what the future holds for each and every one of us. So what's the problem? I believe our bags can often leave us with too many choices for us to properly execute the game plan that we bring to the course. I made a joke about it in the intro, but I really think the problem is shown when we look at this example. Let's say you had a basket about 200 feet in front of you in the middle of an open field. This is a wide open fairway, nothing standing in your way, and conditions are absolutely perfect. What are you going to throw on this shot? If you're looking at this scenario thinking, well, I'd have to pick between this disc, this disc, and this disc, then you might have a problem in your back. But let's take it a step further and what if you were to back up 50 feet? What disc would you be throwing at 250 feet? We can continue with this example moving back 25, 50 feet at a time and we have to realize that when we start having too many options, even in perfect conditions, we won't be able to execute at the highest level when it comes to hitting our lines and succeeding out on the course. We need to learn how to limit the number of choices we have while playing around. Here's my hypothesis and I'm going to flush it out throughout the rest of the video. If we have less choices to make, we will always be more comfortable in those choices. With the hypothesis laid out, I want to use a recent example to demonstrate just how true this might be. For those of you who are familiar with it, Dynamic Disc does a tournament series called the Trilogy Challenge. During the Trilogy Challenge, they release three new discs, whether they are new molds or older molds and a new type of plastic, and players will head to a course and only use those three discs while they're out there on the course. Yet a Trilogy Challenge shines with newer to intermediate players. Why? Because there's less choices they have to make. When they step up to a hole, they aren't picking between five or six mid-ranges. There's only one mid-range choice and that's what they have to throw. Players end up shooting scores way better than they have when they go back to the same course and use their entire back because we go back to our hypothesis. We're always going to be more comfortable with our choices if we have less to make. So how do we start having less choices? Well, we start working with the stuff we have in front of us. One of my favorite websites to help people realize the problem they might have in their bag is called mydiscbag.com. When you go to this website, you can plug in every single disc that you have in your bag. It then plots out all of your discs on a chart, ranging them from understable to overstable flight and the slowest speed disc to the highest speed disc. One of my favorite features though, is when you switch it to flight paths, using this feature, you begin to see how the discs are supposed to fly, thus demonstrating where you might have the big major problem going against our hypothesis, overlap. Overlap comes when we have multiple discs in our bag that are designed to do the exact same thing. Overlap becomes a problem because we gain less consistency and confidence with every disc that finds itself in the overlapping field. If I have five discs that are all competing to be used on this 350 foot shot, then I'm not going to gain confidence in any of them. Once we become super confident in our discs, there should only be one factor that changes our choice, conditions. Those conditions can be the line we have to hit, the wind, the ground that we're going to land in. So you may be asking yourself, Robbie, how do I keep limited options 
so that I am comfortable and confident in what I'm going to choose while also being prepared to handle all the conditions presented to me. Well, hot Gemini, do I have the answer for you. One of the easiest ways to limit your options yet still be prepared for lots of conditions is to limit the number of molds that are present in your bag. By having the same mold in different plastics, it allows me to gain different flight characteristics within the same mold. In the Cosmic Neutron plastic, the disc is slightly overstable, but not crazy overstable, meaning that it wants to fight super far to the left. This allows me to controllably put it on some straight lines while still having a nice, decent finish to the left when I throw it on a back end. Yet that same disc, when put in the Eclipse plastic, which is their glow plastic, it becomes incredibly overstable. I can throw that same disc into a headwind and watch as it seems barely affected, and I can throw it on much wider lines, knowing that it's going to fight way hard to the left, even though it's still a reactor. My hand becomes comfortable knowing the consistent feel of the same disc. Rather than holding on to six different rims when it comes to all of my mid-ranges, I only have three options when it comes to mid-ranges, and yet all five of my mid-ranges fly very different because of them being in different plastics and different stages of wear. An easy guide to remember when you're looking at plastic types is that if you get a disc that's in the base plastics or the somewhat lower grade plastics people might describe them as, they are generally going to fly more understable, yet a disc in the premium plastics are generally going to fly more overstable than their base plastic counterparts. Yet, when you put it in your hand, it still feels the exact same. But I would be a fool to not tell you my favorite part about limiting the number of options you have when it comes to using your discs, and that is getting a disc to that perfect state. Let me introduce you to the pigs. The red pig stays in my bag for two reasons. <laughs> bringing me to the real stars of the show, Purple and my beloved child. This Purple Pig is my workhorse. I'm going to use this disc as much as I possibly can. If the shot is 280 feet and in and I can make a slight hyzer work, this pig is probably getting the call. Eventually, this disc is going to start wearing in, as all plastic does, meaning that it won't be as reliable when it comes to fading and it'll start pushing really straight, which is what happened to my precious child. There is not a single disc in my bag that I would swim for as fast as this disc right here. At one time in my child's life, it was used just as much as purple over there. But eventually, it became so beat in and so reliable that I knew exactly what this disc would do no matter what angle I put it on. Because I limited my choices and used one disc so much, I got to see it move through the life of that disc to a point where it became more reliable than any disc that I've ever used. If I had four other discs overlapped with this same spot, it would have taken significantly longer for this disc to get into the perfect condition that it is. If something were to happen and I wasn't throwing pigs anymore, I would use this exact same route. I would find a new disc that fills a similar slot and I would use it until I was absolutely confident. I know it can be so exciting trying out new discs and figuring out what works for us, and you definitely should do that. But when it comes to gaining consistency in your game, less is always more because it all ties back into our hypothesis. I want us to be the people that limit our choices and absolutely crush those discs on any line possible because we are so incredibly comfortable with every single disc we have in our bag. Thank you so much for coming by and I hope this video is helpful. I am not trying to shame anyone who's out there with lots of mold options in their bag because we all were there at one point. I hope you have an amazing week and that your bag is filled with nothing but the best discs for you. But for now, I'm going to leave you with the birdie.